Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2021 International Nine Ball Open. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are ready. When we're here at the International Open, we're always in the Aramis Simonis Arena, here at the beautiful Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel, our hosts for the past four years. We thank them once again for their superb hospitality. We also want to recognize and thank our great industry partner, Diamond Billiard Products, for providing the best equipment in the business for all of our three events. Thank you very much, Diamond, for all you've done for AccuStats and Professional Pool around the world. One hundred and twenty eight players from twenty two countries have come here to vie for this most prestigious title in the thirty thousand dollar first place prize, which will be awarded in about twenty four hours. And we want to thank all of our champions who have gone through quite a bit with the pandemic, et cetera, to make their way here and play for you and for us. So thank you to all our champions. Now, thank you. Good. Okay, we started today uh, with uh, eight players. We have whittled it down. We've had two quarterfinal matches. We've got Dennis Orculio and James Aranis already into the semifinals. The winner of this match goes to the semifinals. We have one more match after this between Mika Immonen and Albin Ocean. That will complete our final four players for tomorrow. So please be with us for that as well. And we're also going to have the junior championship tomorrow too. So with that being said, let's not wait any longer and introduce our two quarterfinalists. Representing the United States of America, a five-time U.S. Open nine-ball champion, and ladies and gentlemen, also for the first time, he will be the vice captain of Team USA's Moscone Cup, sponsored by QTEC and by Andy Cloth. It's the South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. His opponent's from Russia. This gentleman's a former European nine ball champion, a former Kremlin Cup champion, and he's also a Derby City Classic straight pool champion among his long list of accomplishments. Sponsored by Kaspersky and AMQs, it's the Siberian Express, Ruslan Chinnikov. <laughs> Your official timekeeper for this match is Miss Julie Ha. Now my honor to send it to the commentary box, to the voice of Accustats, Billy Incardona and Mark Wilson. Take it away upstairs, gentlemen. The crowd is assembled, and here we go with elite level nine ball. We have our own champion here with us tonight in the booth. It's Billy Incardona. I'm Mark Wilson. Billy, any pre-match thoughts on this one? Well, Ruslan Chinoff, I uh, really don't know much about him, but uh, I, I'm assuming, and I think that I'm pretty accurate with this, he must play awfully well to reach this level of the tournament. I watched him play a couple of match, a couple, uh, a couple of games again in his last match. He seemed to have, uh, you know, run the table quite nicely. He's, he's, his patterns are really, really, uh, really good. And I expect him to play, uh, play good here. But he's going to have to play good if he expects to defeat uh, our American champion Shane Van Boning. Made a ball on the side, the one ball. Yeah, a lot of congestion out there right away. The three and the six kind of like tied up. The five and the nine uh, closely together. Long get here on the two ball. You'd have to cut it down the rail. Mm, yeah, I don't know if he'll go for this, though. He should put the cue ball behind the five, nine. That would be an option. He hit the point of the side pocket. I would say uh, Ruslan is not a stranger to center court here, but uh, if that there's something suspect with his game, it might be the defensive play. He's an excellent straight pool player, but we're playing nine ball here. Very straight shooter. Looks like Shane's going for that shot that you call. Get the cue ball behind the five. And which he's done quite nicely. Very well executed wow. shot. That's a very devastating safety. Boy, perfect speed, too. If that cue ball goes another two inches. Shinoff would have a shot at the two. 
instead he's got a multiple rail kick. I kind of feel he's going to kick and hit this. I don't know if, he, if it's going to work out for him, but I kind of feel that, he, that he's going to hit this. He comes at it two cushions, end rail, side rail, and out. Right. It's hard to get separation. He's going to have to mass this shot if he opts to play it uh, off the long rail. Better likelihood of a good result if he hits the two. Yeah, well, he didn't really mass it enough. He needed to hit close to the point of the side pocket in order for it to contact the two. He's got to move the three out of there, Mark, unless he, yeah, he almost has to move the three out of there, unless he plays shape to go three cushions short and then take the thin cut on the four. He can draw it back and play the three, going three cushions around. See where the cue ball is now? Mm-hmm. He'll go, he'll go three cushions around and, and, and hit around, around where the cue ball is now, the rail there, and he'll take a shot on the four from that angle. Yeah, I, I look for him to do that. That's better than breaking it out. Yeah, I think that uh, he can he can visually see, you know, the pattern and the way that, the way it, it'll play out. Four ball is pretty close to the corner pocket too, so he doesn't have to be so close to it. No. Yeah, but I think he's got to go around the table here. But in, and in doing so, he may run into the seven if he goes with the, with left hand English. Let's see how well he does. Oh, he's not going around the table like I thought that he might. A little funny on this shot because the eight ball does impede the pocket slightly. You, if you hit it real good, no problem. Purposely played it off the eight ball. That was nice. Yeah, now he's in just about perfect line on the six to draw it back. Playing position for the seven in the upper left-hand corner. Shane recognized the eight ball was a problem in that last shot so he went ahead and purposely played rail first off the eight into the pocket and that was really the intelligent way to play that particular shot because if you go for the pocket and you happen to brush the eight you may not get the ball but playing rail in it into the eight you're going to get it just about every time One zero is our score. Shane Van Boning in the lead. We kicked this match off a little late as we were being detained. Not necessarily detained, but we went to the Hall of Fame banquet where Torsten Holman and Kelly Fisher were inducted this evening. And what a Wonderful ceremony it was, by the way. Yeah. Usually there's a few tears that flow at those. Yeah, but this one was really special. Everyone that was speaking did an excellent job. and Everyone in, in, in the banquet room was thoroughly entertained. It was great. It was the best one I've been to. Really Mike Pinoza does a good job leading that. Yes, he does. I 
got to see Jeanette Lee. She was in attendance there. Well, sure. Shane going to the right side of the break box. I haven't seen him break from here this tournament. Playing the one in the side. Five ball is your wing ball. Wing ball went in and the one ball. Shane's about the only guy that can really get that pretty regular. Oh, gosh. That's ugly. He pocketed Two, three, three, three. three balls on the break, and he didn't come up with a shot. Matter of fact, <laughs> not only did he, didn't he come up with a shot, he can't even hit the blue two ball. It, it hit the racking template, and it looks like it may have frozen to the nine ball here, so a push out. Uh, boy, it's hard to push out when you have that much gone. <laughs> well, there's only one place he can push. That's the up, upper right-hand corner. There's a good look. Not quite frozen, but you can see it definitely hampers. That's a good shot, by the way. The plane foul on all balls. Had the Q-tip brushed a nine ball, then that would have been a foul. <clears throat> I think I would pass this. Probably going to bank it to the left of the nine ball, which is at a soft speed, trying to utilize both the four and the nine as interfering balls. I think he's left them a shot. I'm not sure. If we can get a close-up and take a look at that how closely the five and the cue ball are to one another. He can definitely see the ball, it looks like. Oh, he can make the two. Four is in front of the side pocket. No, it's not. That's the five, excuse me. Playing shape for the three. Well, two rails uh, position for the four, and then this rack will be complete. Right. This, this angle carries a natural line for position. So all he'll need to do is pocket the ball. He's going underneath, though. Got to have a lot of confidence in his draw stroke to opt to play the draw as opposed to going two cushions. Maybe he feels with his draw stroke, he's increased the accuracy of the hit. Sure, that was the reason Shane has all the shots. How straight did he get here? Looks pretty straight, but he's close to the side pocket. And I guess he can just carry the cue ball forward a little bit. He has a nice two rail angle that leads right towards the nine ball, so his speed uh, is, uh, has a generous margin of error approaching the nine ball this way. Yeah, this is a shot that he shot maybe 8,000 times. <laughs> Probably more than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he knows exactly how to hit it. That, so that particular angle was very familiar with him, and uh, the speed was as well. That's game number two to Shane Van Boning. Now, Chinahoff will step to the table to open up the balls in rack number three. You know how Shane made both the wing ball and the one ball on that break right there? Oh, he did make the wing ball? He did, yeah. Went in like a bullet. And the nine's racked on the spot in an effort to prevent the wing ball. But Shane has practiced that and practiced that, and we were preparing for the Moscone Cup. And he said, Mark, get out your radar gun. And he would say, I want to drag it over between the second and third diamonds on the side rail 
19 to 21 miles per hour. And I'm telling you, he made both balls over 80%, maybe almost 90% of the time because he practiced so, so much. And then he shared it with the other four Moscone Cup guys. Mm-hmm. And they, he improved their break, but no one can hit it sweet like him. Well, no one can hit it with the velocity that, that he hits it with. It Just well. from training, I'm saying. You yeah. know, I mean, he's put so, he can tell you what to do, but you can't do it. And then <laughs> when you hit it with that type of velocity, you don't really don't hit the head balls accurately. Yeah. But he has that <laughs> uncanny ability to hit the head ball squarely that, with that type of velocity. When you say uncanny, what you're really saying is <laughs> he's worked so hard <laughs> to get it. That's how he yeah. can do it. And that's why he can tell you what to do, but you can't do it. All right, Chinahoff, let's see what he's got going on. Four ball in the wing. One found the side pocket. Two balls going to end up in back of the five. I don't think he can pocket the two. But he's going to have to shoot this shot. A, a really interesting circumstance happened here because he hit him hard, and this would have been a non-compliant break. The uh, only ball that went across the head string was the ball that ended up going into the side pocket, which made it a, little, a compliant break. So he pocketed two balls. Right. So therefore, if you pocket two balls, you don't have to have any balls go past the head string. Right. But if you only pocket one ball, then two other balls must go by the head tree, past right. the head tree. He's going to have to uh, shoot this and overcut it, obviously. Then the cue ball, down table, no English here. You don't want to have put any inside. No, you want to barely miss the nine. But you want to go up table. you got to keep going. So you go, you, if he would have kept going, he would have been in better shape. Now, depending on how much of the two ball Shane can hit, will determine on how he plays this. You know, he can. Yeah. It's a somewhat distasteful shot because it's hard to get separation and then avoid all the clutter over there if you do go very, very thin on the two. Shane can make the very thin hit, but that leads right into the five ball off the end rail. He's going around using the eight to control the two. Oh, wow. Sending the cue ball two cushions around the five and up table. I think, I think he did a pretty good job. I agree. Of hiding the two. He, he got a lot of separation. And that's always going to be an ally. One of the coolest things about the game today, since uh, I was more involved, was it used to be just get distance, even if the guy can see the edge, you're okay. That's no longer the case. You have to completely obstruct access to the two to be effective. Yeah, because these players today, they're so, so adept at uh, right. managing uh, the, the cue ball and the object ball on safety play. I remember when we went to uh, one foul ball in hand, we'd just rip at them. Just see what happened. Oh, yeah. Right? That's before the Filipinos came over here. <laughs> yes. And taught us, uh, yeah, there's, there's a method to this now. Yeah. We just blindly thought, well, you rip it and see if you can get some good fortune there. Yeah. Hmm. Boy, this is about the second or third time that Shinahoff has had to come to the table with a... I kind of like ugly. kicking off the other rail. The two slows down, it did. Not a bad play. Well, he put him in a tough spot. Even even though he can hit the two, I don't believe he can cut it in. I believe that the four ball precludes him from cutting the two in. And if, if that's the case, uh, he's got some problems out there of walking away in decent shape. Yeah. He's going to try to roll underneath the five here. Very soft roll is very, very delicate here. Very nicely executed. Wow. <laughs> He's got all the shots. And when that cue ball is downstream like that, and then to hit it that thin with that degree of control, well, you can see it took two seconds before it even got over to the two ball to hit it. I think that he can go rail first and just thinly hit the two. Maybe the two will rebound in front of the four. The cue ball will go up table. Oh, he's doing something differently here. He's The, the two's going to run into the four this way. How can he control he the two? He might draw it back, draw. 
to, he's trying to, oh, he didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, it was going to, it was difficult to control the two there, and he really didn't hit it with a proper stroke to get the cue ball to draw back. He kind of let up at the end. Uh, what he was doing, I could see, because he was digging way down, and when you go thick into the two, you're hoping for draw if that's what you were doing, but then he let up on the stroke a little bit out of uncertainty or ambiguity, and then this is the result. He left the chain straight in, and the cue ball only moved two or three inches after it hit the two. Yeah. Then I thought he had a better chance of kicking, hitting the outside of the two softly, and going up table, because if he hit that accurately, he wouldn't have left anything at all. Yeah, this is not what you want to leave for Shane. And now he's a little thin on the three ball here, I think. If he, yeah. he is, yeah. I can see on the overhead. That being said, uh, sometimes when you're at table side, it doesn't look as bad as it does to us. He's, he was looking to go around mm -hmm. the, in between the five and the nine. But if he does that, he's got He's really got to go around. He's got to go around with the speed to bypass the, the four here. I think he may bank this ball, Billy. I, banking it was, would, would solve everything. That would be a, a perfect remedy for this, for this position here. Not queuing up like he's banking. He's trying to go around. And we have to go all the way around here. Yeah. All the way around. Oh. All the way around. He's got to go. He's got to go. He did it. Perfectly executed wow. shot. Good shot. Couldn't have placed it better with your hand, really. Really smooth. He wants an angle to cut the cut the five ball to his left. No, you're, you're losing it. He's losing the angle now. But I think he can force it over. He wants to go to the side rail. Softly. That's about how I would have played it from up here, of course. <laughs> a real good position shot. I think that he may end up drawing his back playing for the other side. Or if he can follow it and play for that side, the other side. Either way, just get off that cushion. This will be rack number three. As the first two racks have gone his way, so has the third. <laughs> We're going to get to see Shane's break again. Three balls on that first break. You know, when I, I can remember there was times here when this was the U.S. Open. Shane was making two and three balls on every single nine ball break as he went through the field. You know how powerful that is. <laughs> when you, Are you kidding? And then when he sees the first ball, it's just doom. There's almost nothing can get in his way or stop him. I mean, talking about a feeling of of, of being defenseless. Yeah. You know, that's the optimum there. Yep. How could you feel any more defenseless than to watch your opponent break the balls of consistently make two and three balls on the break and then back it up with the type of play that he has. Yeah. Right now, Shane's playing with a new model cue as well. I don't know if this is his very first tournament with it, but it's certainly different than it was uh, a few months ago. In other words, that's, that's a new carbon cue. What's, what's, mm -hmm. the, what's the uh, difference in this? I, I'm not sure. You know, interesting. Look at his break. Do you see the elbow is to the inside? This is the way Chain was playing for a long time. Now, today I noticed the elbow is right up over the top of the cue when he's actually playing, but not when he's breaking. Well, things were rolling pretty good for Mr. Van Boning. Didn't pocket anything on the break, but hasn't given up a shot. Yeah. Yeah, poor Ruslan. But he's glad that Shane didn't pop in two balls. <laughs> yeah. That's good. A, yeah. Look at the glass half full. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I have to say, <laughs> Shane can definitely put a 
bunch of racks on you if he gets a shot from the break. When you push, if at all possible, tie up a ball. But there's always a disadvantage to push. That's what he's done. Shane did not bother to get out of his chair, but go ahead. Let Shinohoff play the got, jump on the one. He's got an excellent chance to pocket the one, considering the position of the one, about a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch off the rail, meaning that he can hit several different spots on the rail, or even ball first and pocket the one. It was a long jump, and the ball was still hopping when it got down there. Pretty nice start here for Shane. He wants to go soft speed. I think he can pick up the break angle on the two into the three. Yeah, he certainly can. Jenna Hoff was fairly unfortunate there to leave him this type of an angle on the one to attain the angle on the two to open up the three five or the three. Yes, the three five. He hit it pretty thinly and got a little more movement out of the cue ball than he wanted to, but still very workable. He would like to hit the rail underneath the three. He's looking to go into the five. I think that's pretty risky. No, because he's actually going looking to chip the three ball. If he hits the thin side of the three towards the five. The three ball comes out. If he hits the five, that will maybe clear it. Yeah, too. But, but the target is much bigger going inside. I think that he's better off going inside with this good, nice stroke, hitting rail before the three. He didn't hit the rail before the three. If he hit the rail before the three, he would have ended up with a shot. But uh, he'll have to remedy this rack in another way. Good speed. I'll say. Tough kick. End up uh, in decent shape. Oh, he can see the three. Boy, I don't know. I guess so. He's getting down on it like he can. Well, if he can see the three, there's a chance of putting the cue ball behind the 5 8. With a nice soft speed. He's left a gap. So things aren't changing at all, are they? No. Shane puts so much pressure on his opponent. And, he, and Chinoff, he hit the ball well. It was just a little bit unlucky. I'm kind of curious how he's going to play this. He's going underneath the cue ball. He, this is this is the type of a shot that he hits extremely well, and I look for him to hit this one very well as well. And if he hits this shot well, and he's able to draw the cue ball in between the five and the rail up toward the four, it's going to be a beautifully executed shot, and it's going to be beautiful to watch. Yeah, comes around that five. Good look there. Oh, he adjusted. See how still he keeps his head. Pretty darn good. Oh, my goodness. You know, he's, he's <laughs> the best. Hit that? He's the best at that power game. He's got a, such a powerful stroke, and uh, he's just the best with, with, with uh, executing the power game. Unfortunately, it looked like the three was going to fall there for a second. He is so well. Look where it's at. It's deep in the jaws. You had to hit that awful clean at that speed. Get it that close. The touchy shot right here because of the position of the five. He should go down table and play the five in the side. He's going... Two cushions around playing the five in the corner. Which is oh, a miss. <laughs> that is not what he needed at all there. No. Boy, that was a surprising miss at that. Now 
Now he's going to have to play the six in the side. He overdrew that shot because he really wanted the other angle so he could play the six in the same pocket he's playing the five in. He's got just a hint of an angle where he maybe goes into the nine here a little bit. Yeah, he, well, he don't mind that if that's the angle that he has. I think this this shot plays really natural. If he can go into the nine, he'll move the nine and have a shot on the seven. Good shot there. Chain's playing it like you called it. Why is he using the bridge and, and going up top like that? Uh, he was afraid of double hitting the seven because they're so close together, I believe. And so he could hit downward. This is, he's going to get a, some, a funny reaction with the cue ball going down on it like that. But, but he knew exactly how it was going to play. And considering the position of the eight, so positioned so closely to that corner pocket, he could afford leave a lot more distance because of that. This is rack number four. He's looking to take a four nothing lead. It's race to ten. He had an open ball miss by uh, Bruce Lund and he's asking for a player timeout. Players are back in the pit area. Chin off, preparing to open up the balls in rack number five. He really can't afford any more mistakes here thereafter because the trails in this match four to nothing. One ball's down, six balls in the side. He's got a bank on the two cross side. It lays pretty nice. The three balls position there. On that long rail, where the two balls are going to be banked in, that rail, that's where the three is. I don't know if he can draw it back or, or if he has to follow it. But most importantly, shoot it the way you feel most comfortable pocketing the bank. Good shot there. Side pocket choked a little bit, but then he swallowed. Yeah, you can go forward here, so therefore, no need to draw the ball here, at, especially at this distance. Four balls positioned in front of the pocket. The five in front of the upper left-hand corner. He's going to have to get fairly good on the five to get nicely for the seven. You would like to uh, go two rails to the center of the table. That way he can draw kind of like cross table. If he gets too straight in, he can always draw back in between the seven and the nine. Now he's gotten pretty far over here. I think that plays great for him. Now he's pretty, I don't know, this is, this is not really as good, I don't think. Might not be, but I think he can go four rails here. Come right on around. Okay, he's going to go, if he has, has enough angle... He'll go deep out of the upper right-hand corner, swing at four rails. One, two, three, like Mark called it, four, and perfect line on the seven. <laughs> now, you want to go all the way up table, going toward the eight off the second rail. You gotta stay focused here. This is not that easy of a shot. The angle, right. a little problematic. This will be rack number five in the first wind for Shinoff if he's able to put the nine down. And quality break and run out there. He started off with the bank after pocketing two balls on the break. 
managed the rest of the balls pretty niftily. Yeah, the balls really opened up nicely for him that time when he broke them. But most importantly, he took care of business after the break, which was absolutely necessary for him to do it, trailing four to nothing. Now he has to watch this animal in Dan Boning break the balls in rack number six. If Van Boning goes on to win this match, he'll be one of the final four players left in the tournament and will have to play the winner of the Ocean Mika Eminen match. And both of those players are formidable opponents for Van Boning. Of course, Okolo is going to be playing Aranis. Four ball on the wing. The one ball didn't find the pocket. Looks like it's going to be a dry break. And it looks like it's going to be okay yeah. because the one ball found the position behind the, the five, not allowing Shinahoff an opportunity to do anything offensively here. Most interesting, uh, Shane's broke dry twice and actually left Shinahoff nothing either time. Difficult push as well. Doesn't seem like uh, if he pushes, he can get out of it. And I, no matter what side of the one ball he allows himself to see, he's going to have a problem negotiating it. But he's got to push to the left where the nine is. He's got to go through the nine and go up table and, and try to come off the left side of the one, and find some sort of a safe landing spot for the cue ball. I don't think he can do anything coming off no, the right side. Of the everything's one. tough. He can't push to the right. He's got to push through the nine and take a thin cut on the one. Maybe he could drop the cue ball maybe underneath the green six if, in fact, Van Boning gives, gives him that shot. He wants to lay thinly on the one. He should walk around the table and figure out where the, he needs the cue ball to, run, to lay thinly on the one. Now that's thin. <laughs> that's real thin, and it's a lot of distance there. Therefore, controlling the cue ball from this position is going to be extremely difficult. I like to get a view from where Shane Van Boning is looking at the one. Now, this is a very, very difficult hit here. I'm, I'm surprised Shane's taking the shot. If I were he, I think I'd pass it back. I don't think he's the favorite of positioning both the one and the cue ball in a defenseless position. Extension. Certainly, uh, certainly, uh, certainly, a lot of merit to his his taking all this time looking at it. There's so much indecision out there. That's a that's a, that's a, that's a, a sign that hey, I got to pass it back. Whenever you have to look at something that long, yeah. you really don't want it, so pass it back. Looked to me like he, he felt like he could get the one to the long rail, but that six ball was going to open up and, and leave direct access to the one well, the, after the, this. Well, the speed of the cue ball is going to be very difficult to control. Got to go super soft. Two seconds to even get to the one. Now watch the speed of the cue ball can be very difficult to control. He was able to kiss the six ball, and I don't believe he left enough of the one on, for Van Boning to pocket it. But from our vantage point, Mark, it's hard to determine that. Really good shot by Chinahoff, though. Yeah, well, he cannot pocket the one because if he could pocket the one, he'd already been down on the shot. He's looking to cut the one in the lower left-hand corner and hit right corner. The way he's he's got to worry about, he's got to draw this then 
but he could get a, he could kiss it out after a contact. Hmm. Interesting. No, play there. I believe he played that shot because for for me to believe he tried to cut the one in that lower corner, that shot was really too difficult. But from what I see, the results from what I see, he played that shot. He played the cue ball, three cushions, and hopes to get behind the six, or should be behind the uh, the eight. No question about it. There was nothing else he could have been going for there. Yep. He's got to kick at one cushion here. And this is going to be a tough hit. Oh, oh boy, you're not kidding. And then you're over a ball. We're playing all ball fouls. It's hard. And this wants to warp long a lot of times. Wow. Nice hit. <laughs> oh, I thought he nice made it. Nice hit. <laughs> I don't know if he's left him a shot, but that was one heck of a hit yeah. there. He either has a shot or he has a jump shot. It's pretty playable with the jump shot, too. And to make it even easier for him to jump, he's got that rail to elevate w uh, with, you know, and uh, that's going to make this jump shot play a little easier. I was surprised he missed it. Anything that'll just add to the excitement. <laughs> I don't think that's his plan, but no, but <laughs> but we like it. You know. Providing Shinahoff gets out here. Now the three is kind of like tied up. Doesn't have a pocket to the upper right. Doesn't have a pocket to the up, upper left. So he's he's going to want to get pretty full on the two. I mean, maybe he could draw it back up table. He wants to get behind the three. That, that uh, ma makes both the lower right corner available and the right-hand side pocket available. At first, he's got to contain the angle on the two, get a backup table for the three. Oh, I see. He's going uh, up by the side pocket here with the cue ball at the three. That way he can just go by the three and play the, the three back in the side. I, yeah, I think that's the plan. Yeah, this is a tough angle, though. He's going to go across table. He has to miss the nine. Then he has to hit it with good speed. I'm thinking he's staying on that side. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's too thin for that. I guess it is. You were right. I think that's pretty good speed oh, right there. Very wow. nicely executed shot. <laughs> I guess you know how he got here. That's good playing. Well, he's been pretty accurate with the cue ball the last couple of shots. And he's managed to get through the tough part of this wreck. Got to try to hold it. Center ball. Oh, he went back. That's even better. Nicely executed there as well. It's not that simple to draw the ball, that intermediate range like he just did. Now he has to make sure that he draws it back, but he wants to leave himself a little bit of an angle. And... The way I see this angle here, he may end up straight in. So you know, he can't get careless here. He doesn't want to go to the bottom rail. Oh, he said, well, I'm just going to take a thin cut on the six. He's pretty thin on the six. He's going to have to do an extra traveling here. I don't think he can just baby this in. I think it's up and down the table with the cue ball. It looks like it's pretty good speed. Oh, I think it's... I thought it might be too hard. No, he's okay. He's kind of okay, is right. Kind of okay, yeah. I think you got to draw away from the nine and go in two, three cushions around for the eight. And, and with the speed to stay on the right side of the eight, so after parking the eight, the cue ball will then go toward the nine. Yeah, you have to draw away from the nine here and stay short of the side. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Glad to see the nine ball stop there. That was nice. This is rack number six. Looking to narrow the gap to two games. 
Oh. About the only place on here that <laughs> plays even the hint awkward. <laughs> And he does. <laughs> Little smile there. Glad to get through that mess. 4-2 is our score. SVB in front. Shinahoff will be breaking. Well, if he can open up the balls like he did the last time he broke the balls, he's really going to like it. Taking that break after the score was 4 to nothing certainly has really helped him here. Yeah. He seems like a little bit different player out there. And just like you said, it was a perfect time for him to take that break. You know, he yeah, knew. if you don't take it there, what are you going to do? Take it when you're down 6 nothing. You know, this, yeah. at that point, it's... <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. That was the perfect time for him to take the break. And if you ask him right now, he'll tell you the same thing. he say, yeah, I felt much better now. Just trying to change the momentum of hair. 4-2, Chinahoff to break. Outer table warm up. I see Albin Ocean out there hitting balls. I see Arcolo hitting balls. I think four on the corner. One ball found the mark. There's the two. It's compliant, but I don't think no he's... such luck. Yeah. And that makes it rough when you got a gunfight to start every single rack. Right. <laughs> so right. <laughs> You gotta like win it twice. Yeah, you know, exactly. You gotta win the shot, and then you gotta run out. So therefore, whenever you're hooked off of your break, you have to push, and you have to win that battle. And the pusher is always at a disadvantage, so it's tough to win that battle. Right. If you happen to win that battle, then you gotta win the other battle, of getting out. Right. So right now, he's really looking at a, you know, a disadvantage. The skill sets for the uh, push out the uh, back and forth that exists these guys have mastered really it's not ever easy to push out when you're playing a great player you hit that pretty hard and Shane's going to be able to see the two and yeah, well, if he can he can thin it and he wants him to be able to see it though because if Shane would have passed and if he couldn't see it Shane would have passed and he would have had a kick but he's challenging Shane here. I, I, I think that was okay. You know, if he can see the two. Because if he can see the two, then he has to shoot the two into the, f into the five and bring the cue ball back down table if he opts to take this shot. And if he opts to pass it, then Chinahoff has an out here. Well, okay? A, a so therefore, good, it was a good push. It was, yeah. Anytime you push out and never come back to the table the rest of the game, it was a horrible push out. Your Shinhoff has got him back, got now himself he, back in here. So. Now, he has to be concerned about scratching right underneath him here. But, you know, he, should, he shouldn't hit it with the speed to get that far down. If he can, if he can end up around the first or second or... One and a half diamonds up from the pocket. If he can shoot the two and hit the five with the two, he can get that speed and end up in that position. Oh, he went the other way. Gonna work out. Yeah, it did. But uh, that was very risky there. Got a little good fortune here. You know, Shane can pocket the two here. Off that rail, I like I like the kick better than the jump here. He, if he kicks, he's going to hit the left side of the two softly. If he misses it, he's got two interfering balls mm -hmm. to hook Chinahoff with. That's why I like the kick better than the jump. You know, that's what he sees it. And that's how he's going to play it. He's going to play it with a soft kick, hitting the left side of the two. And hopes to pocket the two, obviously. But if he happens to not to pocket the two, there's a good chance 
And she, when Chinov steps to the table, he won't even be able to mm -hmm. see the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good call. A lot of ways to get some cover out of this one. Yeah. And if he hits it thinly, if he hits the two thinly, then uh, he, I, he's certainly going to snooker him. But he's got to hit the left side of the two here with a soft speed. Soft speed mission part but of But he it. didn't hit the outside of the two. And it was a hard shot, but look, it didn't turn out terrible. No. He may be able to draw behind the five here with a soft draw stroke. He would like to bang the two into the six. So, so that'll prevent the two from coming mm -hmm. back over on the other side. So if he can draw if he can draw behind the five but bank the two around where the six is, yeah. then he'll be in fine shape here. Super short bridge. And then the downward hit a little bit. Didn't put much pace into the two ball. That was right. the idea. That little angle with the cue, it's, it's amazing what it does to the pace of the object ball as opposed to a level cue. And when you're that close to the object ball, you don't really need, you know, a lot of force or velocity on that shot. A little quick draw, send that cue ball back quickly. Four to two, Van Boning has the lead at this time, but Chinov is threatening to uh, right. narrow the gap here. Yeah, he's fighting. And Chinov has earned ball in hand from his good safety play. And that's the two ball ended up in perfect a perfect spot for him to pocket the two and maintain that nice thin angle on the three. To come back down table for the four. The four ball's positioned on this bottom rail. So he's going to need a nice thin angle on the three to comfortably and naturally get back down table. So he's, got, he's in perfect line to play position in between the nine and the eight. They allow the cue ball to get to, to swerve on him. Uh, did, he, did, he, did he use English on that shot? He, he should have. I used think a, he hit the pocket rough. He hit a little full over here going into the pocket when I saw it, and I thought, boy, that's. And it took some pace out of the cue ball and changed the departure line. I kind of like him going off the left side of the four, going yeah. two cushions in between the seven and the six, in hopes to end up in back of the six. He earned ball in hand, but he's not going to get but two balls. You know, and it's always a, you should just be sick and, oh, No, he's got to play to get in back oh, of the six. Trouble, trouble. Oh, no, he had to play to get in back of the six there, and he had to hit the four much more thinly. Well, he's looking at his tip as if he might have miscued slightly on it. Well, then I can understand that then, because that was a not, not a very good attempt. He'll come in between the six and seven here. Boy, he beat Shane to the shot, got ball in hand, and only ran two balls that, on an open layout. It's uh, <clears throat> never going to win playing somebody at the end of a big tournament like this. Yeah, but I think you were right. I think he must have miscued. Mm -hmm. Because you, you can't hit it with that speed, and you right. got to hit the four much more thinly than he did. So therefore, there were two reasons why I believe he may have miscued. It was so far off that when he was walking over the chair, I was glancing at him because I was thinking that was weird. And he was glancing at his tip. So that's what led me to believe that. You couldn't hear it from here. And he's got an awkward angle here. He didn't want to end up where he did. He forced it to the side rail. Once again, utilizing his power. And there's no other player I'd want to bet on with, a, with playing the power game than Shane Van Boning. Oh boy, that was a big turnaround right there in game seven. Oh, yeah. No kidding. It could have been 4 3 here pretty easily. Instead, it's 5 2. And you come back from your break and win two quick games, and you're on your way to a third. And then all of a sudden, boom, give one back. Yeah. And you, and you just wait for an opportunity like that, which don't come that often playing Van Boning, you know? 
opportunities don't really come around when you're playing Van Boning. So whenever you get one, right. especially when you're facing a deficit, you really have to make good with it. He had an opportunity. He played himself out of line on the four, and then he ended up miscuing. That was the very rack that you uh -huh. said you, you have to win it twice. You have to beat him to the shot, then you have to run out. Well, there it was. He beat him to the shot, but then didn't complete the run. And now he's facing a three-game deficit. And when you're playing Van Boning, a three-game deficit is awfully, awfully hard to surmount because, yeah. because you're not going to get that many opportunities. And Big Haas here has uh, broke dry twice. I don't think that's happening a third time. And we're also playing rotate the break, obviously. So therefore, stringing racks now, now becomes a non-factor. Two ball on the wing. The one ball's down. Two balls close to the cue ball. I don't know if he has much of a shot. Looks like maybe up in the corner. Yeah, I can't he, tell. He's got enough. It's like the pitcher, the hustler. Yeah. He <laughs> didn't leave much. He left enough. <laughs> you owe me money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if all know. else fails, he can just stop the cue ball right here. Uh, I don't think he has that. Th yeah, yeah, right. If he doesn't want to play the shot, right. he can stop the cue ball. He's looking to play it in the side here. And the reason he wants to do that is because he can break loose the nine from the five. A little draw stroke, run back a little bit like that. Oh, he's got a nice shot on the three. Now, he's got to be real careful here. He's got to thread the needle going around the table for position for the four. It looks like it may be laying fairly natural, but uh, these type of shots really don't lay that natural. All right, a lot of carry on this required because he's got to get to the other Unless side of the Unless you hit it like that. Boy, look at this position. Nicely played. Yeah, I like going one cushion up. He may go two out of the corner, though, because that'll keep him in line for the five as well. I guess the five goes right on by. I was thinking the six. Yeah, okay. I'm sure I it think. does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it goes by. <laughs> Play in the same pocket. He, he, but playing in the opposite pocket, then the cue ball becomes suspect because the nine's right there. He ended up shooting over the nine, but he hit it with a soft speed. He wanted to stay away from the nine. Yeah. That's why I kind of like playing it for, for the other pocket. You wouldn't have anything to preoccupy your thoughts. Mm-hmm. But we're just splitting hairs here anyways. Either way, he's going to get out 99.5% of the time. This is rack number eight. Looking to extend his lead by four games. Six to two if he pockets the nine. But he's done. Nice quality break and run out. So after Chinahoff failed to convert the previous game, now it's cost him two games. Serious look at Shane. No, that's that's Shane's comfortable look. <laughs> yeah. He's so comfortable, you can just tell. Looking at him, doesn't have a worry in the world. Sitting there, relaxed. Dad doesn't have to deal with any emotions. Just waiting for another opportunity at the table to do his thing. And you really don't want to play him when he's comfortable. <laughs> no. Playing a 959 clip, Billy. Yep. Pretty decent. Okay, something went down. It will be a compliant break. It looks like there's going to be a shot available. Straight in on the one. 
Uh, was it the three ball that went down? I think so, unless the cameras got me. Uh, the five, or is that the four? Yeah, the four's tangled up on the seven. Yeah. He would like to break it, break that five loose with the two, but I don't think he can get uh, to get the right. correct angle to do that, considering where the, where the one ball is positioned and the cue ball. So he may just have to try to do it off the four. He can just, you know, like... Come over slightly to his left. Hmm. Ended up with a nice angle on the two to drop up table for the four in the side. And then try to work it out from there. Oh, wow. That was risky. Risky. I think he got away with it, though. I don't. Oh, you mean he's got to jump. So, in that regard, maybe. I think that was risky because, oh. you know... He had other other avenues mm -hmm. to take, you know, and right. the avenues he had available to him were good ones. But he could he could always play safe off the five right. if he wouldn't if he didn't break it out. Big jump shot here. This combo plays a little bit tough because it's not easy to get position. I think he'll just roll it in. I don't think uh, he's going to get much movement from the two ball because he ate pretty close to the pocket. But there is some indecision out there. He's yeah. kind of like uh, his body language tells me he's not really comfortable with the shot, just like you th you said. The two ball's drifting to his left, and so he has to play soft for a cross-corner bank if that's what he's going to do, or else he could try to play the... But I think he can hit it softly enough to hold it. He didn't even try to hit it off him. So evidently the angle that he had wasn't the angle that I saw. I think when it's all said and done, he's going to hit the left side of the two, mm -hmm. playing the cue ball behind the nine. They don't have not only the nine as an interfering ball, they'll also have the four and the seven for protection as well. Now he's going the other way. This is surprising. Is he trying to get around the four ball here? Is that the idea? Yep. Wow. You know how thin he hit that? Yeah. And he just missed the four. I, I kind of think the other way was more effective anyways. Yeah. You know, he can, he can draw off the rail here and get fairly good results considering the position of the five and the seven. You know, I think I think that he can walk away from the table in pretty good shape if he hits this if he hits this well. And the two maybe go may uh, go around the six. He can also kick off the bottom rail if hit if it accurately with some success. And he can go two rails and kick the two, the two rails will go up table with the cue ball. Oh, that wasn't going to work out for him like that. You know, hmm. it was always going here. Yeah, no, no, that just right. wasn't going to work out. Yeah, he bought himself another turn at the table, but he's not going to like that turn. Well, he can hit it going one cushion, but it's not going to be easy. No. He's going to have to elevate. This this angle and uh, position is similar to the uh, the other one that he kicked. And almost and, made. And almost made and hit it long. So, therefore, uh, he should have some sort of a feel on this type of a kick because of uh, the <laughs> success he had the last time he was facing a situation similar to this. He's thinking about kicking the four back onto the seven and just try to tangle it up. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea, but uh, I don't think either way either option's right. going to help him here. He's just weighing out the percentages. Where would I win the most games from? He knows it's a <laughs> negative expectation. I'm just saying, yeah, negative expectation, but it doesn't have to be as bad as it might be. He wants to make the most prudent decision. Oh, he's going to kick now. 
A realizes that's probably fruitless. His best chance of well, survival. How's he kicking here? I thought it was right between the. Six yeah, and but seven. the way he addressed the shot that suggested to me that he wasn't kicking like he's going two cushions here. He, how, he's not going to get much movement off the two then. You're right. Yeah, you can see his elbow, uh, upper arm flailed downward and uh, cost him a miscue. Second critical miscue of the match. So therefore, if he miscued in the other rack who we were talking about, and then he miscued again, you know, I mean, that's, uh, that's in a stroke. We always look at the tip, but it's almost always in the stroke, <laughs> just so you know. Jerry Bryce has taught me that. We all look at your <laughs> tip. <laughs> he, he says you should be looking back here. <laughs> it's not up there. <laughs> yeah. If he's uh, if he has the angle to he, he needs to cut the ball to his left, he may end up playing up table for the seven. But he didn't. And this is game number nine. Van Boning is going to widen the gap by five games here. Seven to two in a race to ten. And Shane will be right at just under 950 after this nine ball here on this TPA. 730 on the other side of the ledger. Here's a good look. Shane's pocketed 54 balls, twice as many as Shinoff. Shane's made three errors, Shinoff 10 errors. And the score certainly reflects the yeah. TPA as well. Yeah. Those are decisive margins there. You know, Shane needs three games to move on. And he'll be playing the winner of the Mika Eminem Ocean match, which is very, very difficult. But of course, at this level in the tournament, no matter who you play, it's going to be difficult. Right. Yeah. There's no cupcakes. Oh, even in the first round. If you come to this tournament and play and you just don't get smoked, say you lose two and out and you go seven or nine, ten five, ten four, like that, it's not that bad of a showing at all. These are just pure killers in here. Eight fan boning. Good look at his break. Well, a lot of action. And, uh, and the one is hanging, but the two went right in front of it. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. pretty unlucky there. But, of course, he can afford it. Okay, where is the two? Where is the three? Oh, I <laughs> he made, or is it right down there? Yeah, it's right down there. One, here's, two, what he, here's what he can do. Mm -hmm. He can go rail underneath the two and, and call push. And hopefully pocket the one off of the carom. And the two will tie up, be tied up with the eight. Yeah, I don't know. I if think he, he's rather kick at it. Why? Well, uh, yeah, exactly. It's the same thing as trying to push the two going rail first up to the eight. I go rail first under the two here. Oh, I see what you're saying. Just un, 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 let's, okay. Let's take a look at it with the overhead. Can you there draw you it go. up for me? Yeah, sure. Go draw it up. He's saying he wants to go here in between, kick the two up here and pocket no, so no, the one. No, just kick the two to the rail and pocket the one and, and call a push. Oh, I see. Oh, not even move it up by the eight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Just, yeah, softly. Sometimes they have a rule you cannot pocket balls on push. Well, that's what he did. And he tried. He, he, he played. He, he pushed. Okay. He, so, yeah, he pushed. Yeah, I understand we can pocket a ball and push, but you can't control that two ball. He, you know, he, he was lucky that it ended up where it did. Now, uh, Gina Hoff can make a tough shot here, but nevertheless does have a shot. And this is going to be a beautifully yeah, it'll be executed beautiful. shot if he's able to do it. Right. 
similar to the shot that Van Boning had about four or five racks prior to this. Look at that nice hit. Gorgeous. Oh, brutal. That's brutal. Did he get hooked? You've got to be kidding. Oh, that is brutal. I really don't know what to say. <laughs> no. Look at there's a good luck. He did get hooked. Man, oh, man. I really don't know what to say other than what we just saw. That was pretty cold. Yeah, the, a stellar effort. Kicking two cushions at it. This is a very difficult hit. And this is the place he knows it, too. you got to watch out for the miscue here again. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, because you're, you're a little disappointed... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> don't don't put that on him, Mark. Well, he, you can no, see him looking at the tip. He was thinking the same way. <laughs> oh, boy, if he miscues here, I mean, oh, my goodness. Going into a small target here. Great effort. Oh, what a hit. Great effort. What a hit. <laughs> Wow, that was some pretty stuff there. <laughs> that was. Van Booney wants to position the cue ball down by the nine. Golly. Not in back of the nine, Golly. by the nine. Wow. <laughs> Come on with this. Wow. Really good. Yeah, it was a lot of area that cue ball traveled to get there. It didn't have to drop there, right? Perfect speed. But I it mean, did. My goodness, you got to hit the micro dot for sure to come up with something like that. Now, <laughs> another awkward kick. Well, here we go again. Well, he executes that last kick to perfection. This shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, he's looking in about the right place there. Going to have to get a rail after he comes off the third cushion, if or else two cushions. Kick it in the side. Oh, almost. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a very entertaining exchange mm -hmm. there, wasn't it? It really was. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Behind the point on the corner pocket after you hit one of the best balls of the match. Mm -hmm. And then Shane's safe in return. Remarkable. Well, the, nine, the eight does not pass the nine in the lower left-hand corner. So he's going to have to play position for on the short side or else the combination. But I, I would think he would play position for the eight on the short side. And to do that, he would go straight up table the right side of the seven and then you go two cushions off the seven to the, up the upper right hand corner down toward the, so, the side rail by the nine and now he'll go two cushions or even three cushions drawing the cue ball to his right ending up on the side rail around that first diamond this shot will be three cushions and but when I'm broadcasting with Danny he says it's two cushions the third cushion doesn't count Oh, really? So, anyway, <laughs> either way is acceptable. He's going to have to have pretty good speed. Not necessarily, but it would look good and play much more simple if he had good speed to the cue ball. Two. Here he comes into the third cushion. That doesn't count. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good speed, though. <laughs> yeah. Rack number 10. Pocketing nine will give him a six game advantage. Eight to two. Dominating performance thus far. And Van Boning giving no quarter. After uh, Shinoff made that beautifully struck hit on the three, oh. you would have thought he deserved a better fate than what Van Boning did to him. Yeah. You know. 
when he got to the table. Here's the kick performance. Jenna Hoff he had 10 kicks attempted, two errors. Van Boning, three kicks attempted, zero errors. Yeah. So therefore, in the kicking game, Van Boning, TPA is 1,000. <laughs> oh, look how comfortable he looks. Yes. Doesn't that's have a worry that's in the his world. comfortable look. Uh huh. <laughs> We could all be that comfortable when we're at the table. Huh? Yeah. But what, we, what are we going to do when we get to the table? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, we can look comfortable, but we probably wouldn't be comfortable. <laughs> all right. Back to action here. Action on the... I don't, think, he, I don't think anything has fallen... Might not even be complying break either. I don't think Shane will pass it back. Well, if he passes it, Shinohoff cannot push. If he's hooked there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Shane's down looking to see if he can go clean at the side of the one. And he's looking long enough that we know it's very tight. Looks like it does go. No. No, he doesn't like it. He shook his head side to side. So. Well, you know he can't pocket it, so therefore that's not the, right. the decision he's trying to make right now. now I think he's, he was, making, he's trying to make another decision, maybe to go uh, four cushions with the uh, one ball and then follow the cue ball behind the two. He's trying to figure out whether or not he can hit enough of the one to send the one three rails around the uh, the six and eight and follow the cue ball. And he's got to hit it with real good speed to do that. Or maybe he's going back into the six eight here with the cue ball. He might be curving it. Yeah, he's curving it. Oh, he's amazing. Amazing. Oh, 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 what's going to happen here? Oh, you know what was going to happen. You know what was going to happen, right? <laughs> yeah. You knew that it was going to. That wasn't going to scratch. Oh my! This is a little bit of a teaser. Yeah. Shinoff knew what was going to happen too. Yeah, Shane had the curve just ever so slightly. This isn't an easy shot either. No, for this guy it is. Yep. That's uh, Captain America. He can make shots like that. Yeah, and this shot plays natural. He'll play the five in the upper right-hand corner. That'll give him a nice angle to draw nicely for the, excuse me, the four. That'll give him a nice angle on the four to draw for the five. All he'll do is just kind of like check this a little bit, a little harder than a float. Well, he went for the side. Well, that'll suffice. I think he'll go low left English. No, no English. He didn't need it. He could use the pocket. Yeah, he can He can go back or forward. He'll probably go back. That'll keep him in line going toward the six. Mm-hmm. In case the seven was going to be a, a possible interfering ball to hamper his bridge, uh, hamper his uh, ability to control the cue ball, he would go forward. But he can go back here, hit around the diamond where his hand is now. He's going to straight up. Well, that'll work. Just a little bit of a funny angle here, Billy. You know, he could follow it and carry him off the eight and go two cushions. With a powerful stroke, you know, with his stroke, he could do that. Or he can accept a longer shot on the seven. I think that's what he's going for. Oh, rubbed it. Oh, that wasn't going to scratch. You know that. Hit the point. <laughs> <laughs> Look where the cue ball went. You know it hit the point. Yeah, but Shane really was unhappy or is unhappy about how he executed that shot. Mm -hmm. He knows he shouldn't have come anywhere near that pocket. Yeah, once it gets that close, it's out of the player's control. They, they can avoid it by, but when they get very near it, 
Now it's just how the object ball hit the pocket, whether it goes in the pocket, the cue ball, I mean, or the point. Yeah, and that, uh, that's okay, but not his best. Yeah, well, once again, you know, he's got that little in-between stroke that if you don't play eight to ten hours every day, you're not that good at it. Slight elevation. Smooth power there. Nine balls down. Captain America advances to the hill. Yep. Leading 9-2. A mm -hmm. little bit of a struggle, but he's on the hill. <laughs> yep. Yep. He's only playing the 946. He is struggling here. Four consecutive racks here on the rack track. Then Shinohoff took a timeout, came back one, two in a row. And then there in game seven, he did not get out. He had ball in hand, I believe it was. No, game seven was when he missed the four in the corner that we were shocked by. And then the following game, he had ball in hand that didn't get out. And then Shane broke and ran out behind it. Yeah. When you're playing rotate break, it's very, very uncommon for the rack the rack track to see one player string four games yeah. and then come back and string five more. So you very, very rarely will see that, but we've seen it here. And he's looking to close it out with six in a row. Extreme left side of the break box. Six ball on the wing. One ball on the head. One ball's down. Six balls down. Hmm. So he made the head ball and the wing ball twice in this match. And to make this run out play a little more simple, the eight is hanging. Therefore, all he needs to do is send a two ball down table. And that eight is a, a very big target. I believe he's got enough separation between the cue ball and the two ball to cut that two down table, doesn't he? Yeah, it's a pretty fine hit. If he, if, he, if he opts to shoot this shot, then I look for him to elevate with low left English. That way the cue ball will go three cushions around and get and go in between the three and the five for position for the two if he's able to pocket the two a combination hmm. what does he do is he looking to play the two in the lower right hand corner yeah into the eight in the, no, know, yeah, oh, in, into the oh, lower he, right hand corner the only reason would be because he can't control the cue ball well the other way this is strange. Well, the position he must on not be three, able to make the combination. It's awkward to control, and it's awkward to get the cue ball down. Does he want to make it? You bet he does. You bet he does, but he's not going to. Chinoff will have an opportunity at the table, trailing nine to two, to at least get this game. That'll work. Yeah, real good shot. That'll work just fine. He would like to end up center table for the eight. That way he can just hit the ball short rail and go up for the nine. 
that would be the probably the nicest angle he could have come up with in this position. Center table. Well, he doesn't really want to go over to the rail. Well, it's okay. Go around the line that way. Nine balls down. Chenhoff has three. Van Boning nine. Devices uh, here in between racks. All right, here we go. Back to action. Chenehoff set the break here. Extreme left side of the break box. Six on the wing, one on the head. Uh, <coughs> the point of the ball. So he needs a shot. He has a shot on the one on the side. Behind Chenehoff is Bobby Chamberlain. Watching, there's Josh from Richmond. Tough out here. Tough out. Yeah, that five ball won't be a bargain for sure. Do you dare go after that eight ball right here? <coughs> uh, it's, no. it, 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 yeah, it's, you can't. That's it's a stretch. Just, yeah, that's too that's much. a stretch. You might as well get the same angle on the, or get an angle on the four that you can just sail the cue ball into the eight that way. Play the three. Bring it out just past the middle of the table so you have a nice angle and just cut it into the corner and let it hit the rail and come at the eight. No, he stayed That's tight. That's not going to work. He stayed real straight. That's a bad angle there because now he can't even play uh, well, play he, the angle to play a safety off the five because he's on the wrong side of the five. He must have did this by design to go after the combination. It's not too bad. I no, mean, this is probably you know, as high a percentage as yeah, going into him anyway. Yeah, that's not too bad so. because if he w was to break it out, there's no guarantee he would have had a pocket on the five right. after breaking it out. Yep. But this way, he knows what he has, and he was satisfied with it. You know, the other part of it, too, is if you miss that combination, you were not going to beat SVB anyway. You see my point? You know, you just at some yeah, point, you're going to have to yeah, buck up and make a yeah. shot. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't really unhappy about how he played it. Mm -mm, no, uh, it's been smooth. He, he played it because he knew what he was getting, and he took it on. Yeah, that was smart. Okay, and that's and it's, that says a lot when you know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. You take it on and you succeed. Well, you play it with much more confidence rather than if you're surprised when you get there. All right, He's really nice out. Still really fighting. nice out. Nine four. Still alive. Quality break and run out there. No, he's matched the other two game consecutive win that he had in game five and six. I'd like to exceed that. 44 balls pocketed to 72. That tells the tale. Total performance average 935 for Ban Boning. That figure rarely loses. Yeah, 
There's Chinahoff. Not his comfortable pose. So much has to go right for him to win this match. He's got to get a lot of opportunities. That doesn't figure to happen. And on the other hand, Ben Boning, he's got to come up dry on the break two or three times. Or maybe getting hooked off the break. A lot of things have to happen just right. And uh, it don't look good. Break. Well, there's the dry break, but no shot. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's been the story every time that Shane, that's the third time I know that he's broke dry, which is unusual. Every time Chinahoff has had to either push out or try a tough save. If Chinahoff can see the edge of the one, why don't he go with inside English and go up table? Inside English and go up table a little bit. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Nicely struck. Kick and stick. Tough hit, too. He's not a favorite to make this hit. He probably should consider tying the two up to the nine here. Roll the two on the nine will be his probably best bet here. I think he's heard you. Does have a pocket to on the lower left. Let's see if he has a path to get there. This is easier than early had to thread the needle here and with good speed. He's gonna go cross table. Go in between the seven and the nine with good speed, because that's his only pocket, the lower left for the two. How's the speed? <laughs> I approve. Not bad. A little could, have been, inside. could have been a little bit better. Yep. He's got uh, more of an angle on the two than he would like. But if he can get to the left of the nine with the cue ball, it'll be okay. Yep. Well, it was never easy, but uh, yeah. he he has to score that ball if you're going to beat Shane Van Boning. Yeah. Yeah. He, had he had he had a more straight angle on the four on the two, he would have pocketed that. He had to put a little inside English on it, and it was just enough for him to miss the two. It wasn't perfect, but that's a, you're just not going to beat Shane Van Boning if you miss open balls like that of that difficulty. Look at Shane; he got a little straight here, Billy. <laughs> he's scratching his head <laughs> like pulling teeth. He says. Probably enough angle he can work with it here yep. by uh, playing a part of the pocket. Well, he's got so much power that oh. he, he does things with the cue ball. Here's a pretty draw That you don't here. think it's possible. Oh, no. Oh. How <laughs> good that work out. Yeah, it was pretty good. I don't know if he can spin it in and, and, and hold the cue ball. Well, I think you can go right at the five. He's in good shape here. A little off angle. Is he going to draw it straight back with a good stroke, or is he going to go in between the seven and eight? I think he's just going to kind of kill it there, pull it back eight inches or something. And maybe he's going to the other side. He is going to the other side. Well, that plays perfect.
coming right at the eight. Mm -hmm. Perfect like, line. Stop, stop. That's the hallmark of a well crafted run. Match ball now before Shane. And it looks like Van Boning will reach the final four at least in and this tournament. The nine thousand dollar prize. Good job there. Well, I would say the decisive factor in this match was a couple unforced errors, a couple miscues, a couple times that uh, Shinnehoff didn't get out with ball in hand there, and uh, a little bit of Van Boning. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Amboni. <laughs> yeah. He played what he played, 941. Yeah, yeah. Just a 941. Uh -huh. uh, all right, great job, Billy. And this has been an AccuStats presentation. So long for just a while. <laughs>